Hi everyone. Uh, now that we are done with the analysis of single stage amplifiers, I thought we are at a point where we can analyze some problems uh, using the equations and the intuitions that we have developed so far uh, in the few lectures that where we discussed about single stage amplifiers. So the circuit given here is what I have referred to here as a superposition amplifier. You are supposed to find the output voltage across this device. When all the there are five you can assume that there are five inputs to the system all are of same value and this one this one alone is negative so to solve this problem uh, since there are five different inputs whenever there are different inputs i mean if this is given as vdd you can assume this as an ac ground the biasing circuit is not shown the biasing circuitry is not shown in this figure all the mos devices are identical with same gm and I mean bias currents are same, W bells are also same, body effect can be ignored here. And it's also given that R0 is infinity or lambda is 0. Now using this, you are supposed to find, using these conditions, you are supposed to find the voltage across this device. So to again, as I said, well, from the name itself, to find this, you can simply apply the principle of superposition. So before we solve this, I have, I'll just uh, quickly discuss this problem, which I have discussed in one of the previous lectures is what happens when I connect this node to say a voltage Vx and Vy here, these two are AC ground. We showed that this circuit, we had already analyzed this circuit, we applied the principle of superposition and then we showed that if only Vx were present, then this was this circuit, I mean the looking in impedance at this node is infinity because to find that you have to ground Vy, since R0 is infinity, otherwise it would have been just R0, the impedance seen here that would have acted like a load for this device. Okay, so this R0 here would have acted like a load for this device, but since R0 is infinity, I can just float it. Now, since this node is floating, the drain current through this is zero, that is GM into VGS is zero. So we discussed if GM can't be zero, it's finite, there is a finite DC current flowing through it, so GM will be finite. So VGS itself is zero, so your source voltage will simply follow the gate voltage. So this will be simply Vx. Now, similarly, you can assume Vx to be 0 and let Vy to be present and then we can show that the drain impedance you are looking into the source of a device that will be 1 by gm. So the gain for this circuit will be minus 1 so you will get minus Vy. So the output for this circuit when I connect Vx and Vy like this in, the, in this circuit it is simply Vx minus Vy. It was a voltage subtractor. So now the very important point to understand is now for example let us say I connect a load resistance RL. Then what will happen to this output voltage? So to analyze that, always you can always replace this circuit by its Thevenin equivalent. So you have to first find the open circuit voltage by removing RL and that is simply Vx minus Vy. So that will be your voltage. And then we have to find what is the Thevenin resistance in here. So whenever you are finding the Thevenin resistance, you will have to short circuit all the independent voltage sources. So then in that case, these two are shorted and connected to ground. So this device offers no resistance because gate and source are shorted and Z VGS is zero. So there is no drain current flowing through this device. R0 is also infinity. So there is no current flowing through this device at all. So I can simply ignore this part altogether. Okay. This is I'm trying to find the Thevenin resistance. So now you're just looking into this source of a device with gate grounded. So that will be simply one by GM. So the Thevenin resistance is going to be 1 by gm, which is then connected to a load resistance. So this way we can analyze this problem. So whenever you know the gain of an amplifier, the unloaded gain, whenever you load it, we know how to analyze this. We have already discussed these problems for common source, common gate and common drain. You can apply the same thing for any other circuit as well. So keeping this in mind, now we are supposed to analyze uh, this problem, the first one, wherein what we are going to do is that we will keep we will actually keep these two inputs alive so we these two are alive and we are grounding every other input source okay even though all the inputs are same i'm treating them like independent inputs so i'm grounding the remaining things and assuming vi is applied here and we'll analyze the circuit even if vi's were all the same same vi is being applied everywhere you can still use this because they are all independent sources okay so none of the voltage sources will change uh, if I, yeah, so they will not have any effect. The circuit will not have any effect on those voltage sources. So they are, you can treat them like independent voltage sources of identical value Vi.
Okay, I can simply treat this as five independent voltage sources VI, 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 VI and minus VI and analyze the circuit. So now if you see this part of the circuit is something we are familiar with. But now we have attached this, this is also interacting with other circuit. So whenever it's interacting, you'll have to find what is the impedance seen at this point. And that will behave like a load resistor for this circuit. So since for this circuit, the at the drain for this circuit, R0 is infinity. The R0 is infinity for this device. And when we, we discussed for a MOS device, when you look into the source, R0 is infinity, gate is grounded. Then whatever you connect at this node, it doesn't matter. The impedance is simply going to be 1 by GM. So now this part of the circuit that is, I'm just going to redraw that part. We have, where I've connected VI and VI here or or I can assume VI and VI here and then there is a load resistance 1 by GM. So we just drew the Thevenin equivalent for the circuit that's going to be VX minus VY and resistance of 1 by GM and a load resistance is also same as 1 by GM. So the voltage at this point will be the Thevenin, the voltage at this point will be the Thevenin voltage half multiplied by one half. But the Thevenin voltage itself is zero. So the load really doesn't matter, it will again be zero. So when I apply this, you are going to get zero volts here. Now this circuit, this, now the other half, what I am going to do now is I am going to keep these two inputs alive. Okay, uh, I am sorry, I will just uh, come back to this problem. So now we discussed that uh, this node voltage is zero here. We also have to find what is the drain node voltage. Now, if I look at the impedance in the drain node voltage, when I'm looking here at this node, this MOS device has no contribution because VGS is zero. So there is no drain current flowing through this. Okay. So there is no uh, R naught as well because R naught is infinity. But this MOS, you're looking into the source and the impedance seen into the source is one by GM. So even though you have a finite impedance connected here, there is no current flowing in the circuit at all because this source is also at ground. So you will have no current flowing. Therefore, I can simply assume that the voltage drop at this node is also zero. So the VDS will be zero. Drain to source, uh, VD minus VS is again zero. In a similar way, we will analyze this part of the circuit wherein we will keep this inputs, two inputs on this side alive and we'll ground every other input for the circuit. Now, when we ground every other input, the we know the open circuit voltage at this node is VI minus VI, this voltage minus of this, which is two VI. That's the drain node voltage. And we'll have to see what is the loading impedance, the impedance at this node. So now you're looking into the drain, R naught is infinity. No matter what you connect at the source, the output impedance is always going to be infinity for a MOS device. You're looking into the source of a MOS so you can treat this as a MOS device with a source degeneration and the value of the source degenerated resistor is 1 by GM. And that impedance here is simply infinity. So the voltage here will simply be 2 VI itself. You know, if RL is infinity, the voltage you are going to get at the drain is simply 2 VI. This is the drain voltage. Now the source voltage here, there is a finite resistance connected to the source which is 1 by GM because the impedance looking because of this MOSFET, you are going to get a resistance of value 1 by GM. But you should recall that since R0 is infinity, even if you change this node voltage, there is no current generated in this MOSFET. Now, because there is no current, the voltage drop across this node is going to be 0 because you have a finite resistor connected to that node, current to 0, current times resistance is also 0. So, this node will be at 0 volts. So, the drain to source voltage is simply 2 times VA. Now finally, we will come to this final problem, the final problem where we will, the final part of the problem where we are going to only keep this input alive and ground every other input. Now to analyze this part of the circuit, we can very quickly realize that this circuit looks like a source degenerated MOSFET and we are finding the gain of a source degenerated MOS amplifier. We have already analyzed this amplifier extensively. So when you look into the drain, the resistance impedance is 1 by GM. And when I'm looking at the source, that is at this point when I'm looking at, so when I'm using the word looking, what I mean is I'm just going to apply a test voltage Vx and measure the current and take the ratio Vx by Ix. So that's the resistance seen at this node. So this device, Vgs is zero, it doesn't contribute to any current. So I can ignore this device. 
only this device matters and the impedance you are looking into the source so it's 1 by gm so the circuit will simply be i'll draw a very small version of this we'll again encounter the circuit in the other problem as well but i'll draw it here so this is 1 by gm and 1 by gm so both source and drain are connected to the same potential a source to drain and resistance are connected to the same resistor and uh, the voltage gain for this circuit the voltage gain or the voltage across these two terminals so again to calculate this you can calculate the uh, the, the 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 current the reduced effective transconductance so that's going to be gm by 1 plus gmr so that will be gm by 1 plus 1 gm by 2 times 1 by gm will be minus vi by 2 here and this node voltage will be plus vi by 2 so it's simply negative of this the source terminal will simply the negative of the drain terminal okay because your source and drain impedances are same so the drain to source voltage will simply be minus vi okay so the voltage here will be minus vi and that's what is shown here so now we are back to this i'm i've shown all the approximations in a single circuit so here if you see the first case when these two input this part of the inputs were present we showed that the output voltage was zero when this part of it was present the output voltage was 2 vi and when only this input was present the input voltage was output voltage was minus vi so when all the inputs are present you simply have to add all the voltages so zero plus 2 vi minus 2 vi you will get plus vi so you will get plus vi here so that's how you solve this problem so i, I just picked a problem wherein we will be using all what all the knowledge that we have gained through these lectures okay the next problem is what we will call it as a phase splitter so input voltage vi is applied here and the output is taken at the source and the drain and fed to an another amplifier like this so this is what we call as a differential amplifier i'm not i have not introduced the word yet we will talk about differential amplifiers later okay and the analysis of differential amplifiers can be much simplified greatly simplified once we understand the theory of differential amplifiers but right now i'm going to analyze it with just the knowledge of single stage amplifiers so whenever you have you can first treat this as a two stage amplifier so stage 1 is here and stage 2 is here so you have you have input is applied here the outputs are taken here which is again fed to the inputs of uh, the next stage of an amplifier so whenever you are supposed to analyze that you should always split this into two halves you, you are identify the two stages so first split it into the first stage when you are splitting this you will have to ensure that you are including the load resistance of the next stage so we will talk about more about this when we talk about multi stage amplifiers but right now i picked a problem where the current flowing through the gates are zero so this circuit this part of the circuit has no effect on the gain at these two node voltages because since it's drawing not drawing any current so then this node voltage is purely determined by the first half of the circuit itself okay so again i didn't uh, state the assumptions in this problem all the devices are identical especially nmos devices are all identical all the devices have same w bells same bias currents okay every device device is shown here as well they are all going to have same bias currents same w bells and lambda is zero which means r not is infinity for all nmos devices and i have to ignore the body effect so gmb will not be present in the analysis and for pmos devices also though it's not explicitly mentioned as a problem the gm of the pmos is also equal to the gm of the nmos devices which i'm going to call it as gm here and pmos devices also r not is infinity for the pmos device as well so using this we will analyze this problem so eventually you are supposed to find the voltage between this node and this node here so first i'll take the first half of the circuit i've split it here so the resistance seen here whenever you diode connect a mosfet the resistance looking into the gate uh, it's going to be 1 by gm going to the source it's going to be 1 by gm so again we have discussed the diode connected mosfet so mosfet is a three terminal device but the instant i connect gate and drain it becomes a two terminal device so this is your vgs and uh, the current flowing between these two terminals will be your drain current and we know the characteristics of a mosfet is a, follows a square law characteristics because gate and drain are always shorted to each other the device is always will be in saturation so this saturation current the square law equation is perfectly valid for this vth is a threshold voltage 
So now this MOS device is now going to behave like uh, if I mean as long as if you ensure the VGS is greater than VTH, this device is simply going to behave like a resistor, a nonlinear resistor. Because if you increase your voltage, the current will increase quadratically, or if you increase your current, the voltage will have a square root dependence on the current. So it's a nonlinear resistor. For a resistor, voltage and current should be linearly related. So this also reduces to a two-terminal device. But for small signals, we can approximate and find its impedance. It's going to be simply 1 by gm. The two-terminal MOS device can be replaced by a val resistor of value 1 by gm. And this is something we are aware of already. So using that, I can replace this and this by 1 by gm. And we have already analyzed this problem. So this node voltage will be 0.5 VI and this will be minus 0.5 VI. Now if you look at this circuit, I have started with VI, but I could generate two voltages, plus 0.5 VI and minus 0.5 VI. They are exactly in opposite phases with each other. So that's why this circuit is called a phase splitter. So these are called differential signals. <coughs> okay, so these two are what we call as differential signals and it has generated two signals which are out of phase with each other. So that's why we call this circuit as a phase splitter. So the drain and the source node voltage are out of phase with each other. Okay, so I mean, I've just used this word, the point for here doesn't matter, but it just generates two signals which are equal in magnitude, but exactly opposite in phase. Now we will go to the second part of the circuit. The second part of the circuit looks something like this. So, so I will draw the second part of the circuit. So we have two MOS devices and another MOS device connected here and two PMOS devices acting as loads. So I will replace the PMOS devices with a load of 1 by gm. So I will just, because we just discussed they both are diode connected PMOS devices, NMOS or PMOS if they are diode connected, the resistance offered by them is 1 by gm, AC small signal resistance is going to be 1 by gm. Now to analyze this circuit, so we know the voltage here is half VI and the other node it is minus half VI. So I am just go back to the circuit. So this node here, the voltage at this node here is VI plus VI by 2 and this node voltage is minus VI by 2. So I will just go back to the circuit here. So your output voltage is measured like this. So whichever is minus, it is its plus here. Now to analyze this amplifier, we have to go to the small signal AC model. So for the device which is connected at the bottom end, which is the tail device, the K2 source voltages are zero. So R0 is infinity. So I can simply ignore this device in the analysis. So this is AC ground. Now to analyze this amplifier, you have to find the output voltage V0. We can again apply superposition. I can assume that this is zero and try to find the voltage. And then I can assume this node voltage is 0 and keep this input alive minus Vi by 2 and find the node voltage V0. Okay. So that's what we have shown here. What we have shown here is that we are only going to keep first Vi alive and we will find this. Since R0 is infinity, if you look at the circuit, the impedance seen above is 1 by gm. The impedance seen here, again you are looking into the source of a MOS device, R0 is infinity, so no matter what you connect to the load, it does not matter, the input impedance is always going to be 1 by gm. So we just analyzed the problem where we have 1 by gm as a source resistance and 1 by gm as a drain resistance, then this node voltage is simply going to be, I have used the word Vi here, so I, ideally what you get here is Vi by 2. If I get Vi by 2 here, so if you recall, this is V0 in the circuit. This is how V0 it is shown in the actual circuit. So this node voltage will come to Vi by 4 and the node voltage here will come to minus Vi by 4. Now you are supposed to find this node voltage because the output is simply the difference between this and this. Okay. So to find that I have found the voltage from this node to this node which was actually Vi by 4. Now we have to find the gain from this node to this node. So this is nothing but a common gate amplifier. So the first stage was actually, if you see the circuit, uh, you have applied an input Vi by 2 here 
and this was connected to a common gate amplifier because gate is grounded output is at the drain and that is connected to a resistance of value 1 by gm this is vi by 4 now this common gate amplifier you have, uh, have a common gate amplifier with a load resistance of 1 by gm so it's simply gm into rl which is 1 the gain is 1 so this node voltage will also come to vi by 4 or we can simply analyze it this way so gate is at ground source voltage is at vi by 4 so you will have a current gm into vi by 4 flowing this way from source to drain and that current when it flows through the load resistance of value 1 by gm it's going to create a drop of vi by 4 across it the other end is at minus vi by 4 so the difference between the two voltages is going to be vi by 2 similarly i can show this for i'll keep vi by 2 alive I can actually keep vi by 2 alive and then try to find minus vi by 2 alive. So I will keep uh, the other node here so which is minus vi by 2 alive here and this is grounded and you are supposed to find the output voltage v0 across this. So if this is vi by 2 the looking in impedance at this node we have to just do the same procedure is 1 by gm so this node will come to minus vi by 4. And this node voltage, since the gain, this is the common gate amplifier, the gain is minus 1 plus 1. So it will be just minus Vi by 4. You will have a current minus Gm Vi by 4 flowing this way. And it will drop across the resistance of value 1 by Gm and generate a voltage of minus Vi by 4. And the voltage at this node, the voltage at this node is simply Vi by half of what you applied here with a negative sign. So this will be plus Vi by 4. So the differential voltage, when the voltage between these two terminals, it's going to be Vi by 2. So you use superposition, add the two, you will get Vi. Okay. So finally, the voltage gain of the circuit. So V0 is simply what we got in this problem. V0 is simply equal to. So I'll just write the voltages at all the intermediate stages. So you applied Vi here. At this node, we had a voltage of Vi by 2. And at this node here, we had a voltage of minus vi by 2 then because of this we calculated the plus vi by 2 here we calculated v0 turned out to be plus vi by 2 and again we calculated voltage due to minus vi by 2 and we showed it it was another plus vi by 2 so when you add the two voltages you get plus vi so again this is a problem i uh, i just took a problem to show the difference so the in fact when you analyze this part of the circuit there is common drain and common source with store degeneration in this and this part of the circuit has common source and uh, common gate amplifiers in fact when we go to differential amplifiers this circuit can be analyzed in a much simpler way than what we did just now okay to find this voltage i had to trace many paths so but you don't need to do all that once we start learning the theory of differential amplifiers so in the next lecture we'll start with the discussion of multi-stage amplifiers